Okay, this is my new 3D printer. Uh, it's a Delta style Castle. It is not the any cubic 3D printer brand name. It's a uh, Hakka, H-A-C-K-K-A. -K -K -A. And I got the Hakka because it was the only thing available on eBay that could ship within a reasonable amount of time. Everything else was two to three weeks. This one was $13 and uh, you get it in four days. So I, I used to do 3D printing a long time ago. I stopped because it's very time consuming to design your own parts and stuff like that. And uh, before we get into unboxing this, let me show you what, what I had been doing with 3D printing uh, six or seven years ago. Well, this is my uh, Mendel printer. Uh, I think I built it in 2010 or 2011. Uh, Mendels were new. Prusas were not a thing really, or they were hard to come by. Um, the only real difference between this and the first generation Prusa is that these two bars for the x-axis are up on the side. And I didn't think that was a big deal. But now I'm starting to realize it kind of is a good design decision because uh, everything on your hot end down here is sort of obstructed by uh, unnecessary material and movements. Uh, it's hard to get a fan down here, so if if this was up on its side and your hot end came out this way, you'd have more unobstructed um, area to attach cooling fans and things like that. I'll, I'll give you a closer flyby of this. Um, I got the glass upgrades. This has gone through a lot of upgrades. This is not the original Mendel carriage. This is an open X carriage. Uh, the Greg's Wade's Tom's extruder or whatever it is, I actually got from a Maker Fair. I, I went to a Maker Fair with this to represent uh, Michigan Rep Rep user group, uh, Detroit Maker Fair, and um, one of the guys there, I could, I could never get this thing running very well. It was always jamming, and he gave me uh, this uh, extruder because he felt sorry for me. The hot end down there is, uh, let, me, let, me, let me zoom in on the hot end. So this hot end is, uh, I also got at that Maker Faire, there was another vendor there saying, oh, your hot end's bad, it's always jamming, uh, you need to get this. This is actually a ceramic bulb, so there's thread, threaded rod, and then... Um, the hot end, there's no like heater block, it's just like the hot end and nichrome wire around it and then you encase everything in the ceramic, you like mix it with like a tongue depressor and then you put it on there and you cook it and it sizzles and smokes and all that and this was like brand new at the time and yeah it worked better. Basically everyone there told me they don't print ABS, you can only print PLA, if a lot of your parts are PLA, you can only print PLA. Uh, these parts I designed myself, and they are uh, uh, for the L8MMU or LM8UU bearings. You know, we didn't have these. They weren't readily available. Um, you can see that most of this is all the trapped bearings still. Um, we have one bearing on top. Uh, one bearing on the side and then one bearing sort of off at like a 270 degree which that is just printed PLA bearing interesting uh, I recently added this part fan well recently I mean the part fan so one of the things that I noticed is that I think now getting back into 3d printing I really need cooling break here I really need a fan on this because I think what's happening is the heat is creeping up here and the PLA's glass transitioning, getting jammed and all that. So I think uh, this fan shroud should have a hole or something more akin to what you see with the uh, E3D V6 or V5 hot end. I'm not sure what to do. So I'm not sure how much time and energy and how many small $10 parts I should buy for this thing. That's why I got the, the Delta. I'm just going to start over and then I'll revisit this as needed. You know, if, if I want a Cartesian again, I can slowly get this up. This is this is how we used to get filament. It's all air spooled. And you had to make your own spool holder for it. And this is the spool holder I made, and it's never... Ugh, it's all, it never worked really well. 
you sort of clip it there and then it, it always falls over. It's not wide enough and I don't ever know what I think I just held it or I don't remember what I used to do for for filament spooling. Um, you know, electronics are like ramps. I don't know if this is ramps 1.1 or I don't even know if they had versions at this point. Uh, I lost my Arduino Mega. I think I used it for, I pulled it off and I was using it for a lot of security stuff, uh, doing signals and it, I think I lost it in a move. So I don't even have, um, an Arduino Mega anymore, which is interesting. You know what? I'm getting back in to, uh, and I'm looking at all the, all the, uh, printers and reviews and stuff. And people are still saying like ramps at, at Mega 2560. Marlin, Pronterface, all these things that I used to use six years ago, seven years ago, and I'm like, man, is it not really advanced all that much? So here's uh, here's proof. I got the last upgrade I was going to do is this GT timing belt. I got a special timing belt because this, this belt is so loose and it won't ever stay. And this is dated... Uh, Here's the receipt for it, 5-10-2012. And I never got around to putting that on, so that tells you um, this was at the end of my... Uh, I, I moved right about then, and, and I, like again, I just never got back into it because it was very time-consuming. Uh, well, before we go back downstairs, I want to show you some of these prints that I did with this thing. This is the initial calibration cube I did with it. Very deformed. Uh, bridging wasn't good. I mean, I got I got better. This is just the first one. I just kept it. Um, there's some overheating issues down here. Uh, yeah, this was with the original extruder. Um, I made some and painted some uh, hexagonal uh, interlocking game pieces so you could... Uh, um, make a game board like that and then you can randomize the tile set so it, it's Catan basically it's Catan here's the wheat tile and you know the tiles come out go back in uh, what else did I print I don't think I printed this maybe I did and this is when the guy finally decided to give me the other one because I could never I could just never finish a print. Uh, I, I don't know. They just uh, the quality was just not there. Here's another very early gear that I printed. Um, uh, this oh, this was my heated bed. All right, so right, I didn't even know to get a real electrical box, so I used like a lunch meat box. Uh, put a dimmer switch in there and uh, wired up some some hair straighteners. Right, and this still, I think this still has the sensor on off. I, uh, I don't even remember. Um, so yeah, I took some like ten dollar hair straighteners and broke them apart and epoxy. This so was just two or three. I think I bought two pair and put three or four and like epoxy them to the underside of the bed. And while it worked, it would unevenly heat the bed, and the bed kind of got warped after a while. And that's why I put the glass on it, uh, but the bed was so warped that um, it started breaking those those clips, those bulldog clips that you use to hold down. So uh, I don't think I have. Oh, I still do. Okay, so yeah, initially this is the heating element. So initially, I literally just broke the the flat irons and like silicone them to the bottom and plugged them straight into the wall, and I used. The, their own temperature gauge and then I tried to break apart the electronics and figure out how triax worked and that didn't work and that's when I just I gutted them completely everything except for these heater elements and uh, wired them up to the household because that's basically a triac the household dimmer switch and that plugs straight into the wall and there's no fuses or anything so you know not the best design but I never left my prints unattended um, I think this is where the heated bed, uh, it's like a MOSFET. I, oh no, that's just the thermistor wire that tells you what the temperature is. And I would just 
like read that. I would just read it manually and do this. Oh, that's another thing is that uh, we didn't have LCD screens and SD card readers. Those were like, um, you know, I, I don't even know if you can see it on here. There's no like auxiliary one and auxiliary two uh, jumpers or anything like that. Maybe there are and I'm missing them, but those were like, fancy do-it-yourself oh hey this is probably another reason why I stopped this let's see this uh, MOSFET is fried don't know what that controls um, but that might be another reason why I haven't done anything with this in a number of years so I need a new ramps. I think my Palulus are still fine. Uh, yeah, definitely a newer, newer ramps. I guess this is ramps one. Uh, anyways, enough about uh, out with the old, in with the new, right? I mean, let's go look at this new castle uh, and see what it can do. All right, one one more bit I wanted to show you is that this this Mendel kit that I got was printed on like a professional 3d printer so this is some of the original parts and that's why I hadn't really upgraded because I hadn't really got my system to where I could produce pretty good parts and like this is a part that I made but look at that hole right I mean ugh, it works enough but uh, yeah this is probably some of the best printing I've done but this is a small ish short timeline the longer timelines I never really got finished uh, the open X carriage I printed myself um, that looks pretty good if I might if I do say so myself uh, it's dusty and dirty and then here's another shot of one of these parts from a kit so I got the kit from uh, somebody in Canada and they had some kind of real FDM printer and they were printing Mendel sets and uh, you know me I think maybe Prusa's were out but this guy hadn't heard of them or anything like that um, yeah interesting all right so what do you get when you actually order one of these um, printer kits online uh, so I already opened this last night, but I put everything back because I couldn't help myself. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, there was like three holes in the cardboard. And when I lifted this up, there's like three holes. And this is the stepper motors. Um, right here, the stepper motors. I mean, they're in there pretty snug, but I guess they got shipped wrong side up. And they poke. I hope they're not damaged. Uh, I haven't tried them yet. So, uh, USB cord, hooray. I mean, hooray. Bowden tube. Uh, Thermistor and heater core. Power supply unit is, uh, 20 amp, 12 volt output. So no, no 24 volt. It's got an adjustable voltage. I don't know if you're supposed to mess with that or not. Uh, fan, two fans, whatever, 40 millimeter. Uh, cable, cable wrap, whatever. You know, you know that thing. Uh, knockoff E3D hot end. I, I'm pretty sure it's a knockoff. Very little uh, heat break. And the heater block is pretty small. I'm not sure how much. It's 0.4 millimeter. I looked. You know, these are the stats that they're not going to show on the eBay listing, whatever. Ooh, hey, this comes apart. Do I have to put something in there? Interesting. So, again, I've never had a hot end like this. I told you my last hot end. Uh, depending on how I edit this video, you may have seen what I already have. And uh, Last hot end I had, I had to 
fake some ceramic on there. So this is all new to me, but it's extremely light. I mean, it's got to be aluminum. It's it's very light. Uh, and again, the heater block is kind of small. I don't know how much heat that's going to hold or probably have to do some PID tuning to make sure I can keep the constant temperature. Uh, connectors up the wazoo. There's an end stop, uh, motor mount, um, Bowden tube adapter thing, uh, nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts. Uh, whoa, focus. Let's just love the fact that you can't focus cameras. Uh, little toothy gear thing for the motors, bearings, tiny bearings. Um, so all the connectors. Ah, my favorite, right? The Cadillac, which is now standard. <laughs> LCD, so I don't need my stupid laptop there uh, going to sleep and trying to do USB serial uh, acrylic faceplate for the... For the Cadillac of 3D printers, which is the monochrome, uh, monochrome LCD display unit. Hooray! Now, this Castle is the upgrade with the linear slides. That's why it was $200 instead of $180 or $170. Again, I got it because I always wanted Delta. Uh, ever since I saw, ever since I saw the roast dock, I remember when they were making the roast dock, people were like, "It's never going to work. It's too much backlash." And then this guy Johan just did it. Uh, the Castle is just another version of the Rostock. I don't know how much is different. If you look at the Rostock, Rostock, I don't know. Uh, it's got the linear rails. It, it's it's kind of more Mendel, where it's got the 8mm and the LM, you know, linear bearings. And then and then the, the Rostock is more of this. Uh, it's, it's more built around this and the bearings sort of slide directly on this there's there's round bearings that slide directly on this t extrusion profile but then the linear upgrade kit is uh this thing and i don't know if this is just uh, the chinese kit makers doing this or if this is johan uh the guy who made the rostock and the castle designs if this if this was like sanctioned by him or whatnot we have our smaller rails for in between and these are let me let me let me measure these for you so you got i think you get six of these and they are nine and a half inches or so many parts of a meter do i, do I not have centimeters on this <laughs> well it's like Nine and a half minus the sixteenth. Ah, take my word for it. You don't care. The long ones are twenty-six and a quarter ish. Got my calipers that do centimeters uh, when they work. God, these are so cheap. Uh, zero uh, inches millimeters. See, these are twenty. Woo! The 20 millimeter extrusions. So you get one that's about 26 inches and one's about nine and a half inches. Wait, can I measure this with this? Nope. What else do you get? So I got three of these. Four of these. No. No, I put one back. <laughs> Six of these. Um, so these motors are what? NEMA 14, I want to say. Uh, 1684A. I don't know if that's in focus or not. Uh, 1684A, SL42, something, something. The motherboard. And this is like, what, an MKS2? I don't know. I've been out of it so long. It's definitely, I looked at it, it's, um, what do you call it, uh, at Mega 2560, and on the other side, ooh, we got the brand name, lovely. Comes on this little piece of wood for no particular reason. I don't know, maybe, so it doesn't short out, I guess. Yeah, at Mega 2560, removable, so these are the Palulus, but they're removable, so you can upgrade, yay, they're not integrated onto the board, hooray. 
and uh, uh, one, two, three, four, and five. So you could, you know, repurpose this for a Cartesian with an extra motor, or I don't know what you'd need the fifth one for on a Delta. If you know, hey, leave me a comment. So what the heck is in here then? Uh, here's the hot plate. Or the build plate. It, this is not a hot plate. I misspoke. This is just the build plate. It's some kind of glass. It's very shiny, very smooth. The other side is textured. I'm not sure which side goes up. And <clears throat> that brings me to the point of I have no idea if there's instructions with this thing or not. So this is uh, 7 and 7 eighths. Uh, there's no millimeters on here. Like even on the other side. What, what am I, uh, bleh. and this isn't going to go far enough, is it? Nope. Uh, 50. Let me go see if I can find something with millimeters on it. I mean, I know I own something with millimeters on it. I just couldn't find it. I, I thought that, I thought that would have both. Okay. So no millimeter measuring devices in the house. Sorry, not sorry. Um, I mean, I, I own two of them. I just can't find them. I have this, but it only goes up to, uh, 15 decimeters or whatever. So where were we? Ah, this printing plate, which side up, which side down. I mean, I'm assuming this textured side goes down, but that would be interesting to print on. And what did we say? That was seven and seven eighths. Now, what's in here? I don't even know. Ooh. More? Oh, yeah. I remember I opened this. Okay. Timing belt. One screw with a nut on it in one bag. Thank you. Ooh, fancy um, on-off switch. Wait. What? What? This... This is how you plug it into the wall? Wait a minute. There's got to be a better way to... This goes... I mean, I'm not going to build it right here, but... I was assuming that this would have one of those universal sort of uh, PC plugs, and then that would power the device, but... No, it has like an RC model polarized thing. Like, what? And then, oh, the USB. Okay, so to control it, if you don't have the card or to update the firmware. Okay, I don't know exactly how that power. Goes. Yeah, so, okay. Oh, okay. Because they give you this, and then instead of giving the universal line, they give you scary alligator clips. All right, cool. La Wait a minute. The white is live and the black is neutral? Wait. Oh. No, that's right. Okay. My bad. Uh, and then you have all your end pieces. Uh, two different uh, top and bottom, sort of. And then, so these are then, these are uh, injection molded, obviously not 3D printed. And, you know, makes me sad. The goal of the rep wrap. The RepRap open source project is to make a printer that can print itself, and it sort of kickstarted this whole 3D desktop phase that, um, you know, people don't care about building a machine that can build itself. They're so low cost now, it sort of depends on, uh, you know, what are, what are you trying, what are you trying to build for? Are you trying to build a RepRap that can work in the third world and stuff like that? Oh, interesting. The end effector is completely cast that's interesting you know people have just stopped that that's why I built my Mendel you know it, most of the parts are wrapped uh, open source and able to be printed with its own thing I think people sort of lost interest in that um, the main idea being a machine that can replicate itself and they're just into low-cost machines now like whatever this is uh, the belt tensioner or gripper. I don't know. 
Uh, and then here's are the carbon fiber rods and little springy dos in between. That's a nice touch. Uh, I gotta measure these and see if they're all. They look to be longer than my calipers, so. Uh, yep. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do an accurate measurement to see if they are all accurately the same size or the same length. Yeah, carbon fiber. And put some sort of metal through them, see if they're all the exact same. They don't appear to be half of your print layer height if you're going for 0.2 millimeters. Uh, does anyone see my spring? I don't... Oh, found it. Okay. Hopefully that's the only one that fell. Yep, I got three. I'm assuming there's one per pair. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, this is the unboxing. Motor mounts, Bowden, cables, cables, cables. The interesting thing to me was... Is the power supply going to be 24 volt? Doesn't matter. It doesn't have a heated bed, but I would have liked it to be so that if I do get a heated bed, it, I don't have to change. Um, uh, what, what electronics came with it? Uh, and that would be just a 8-bit uh, Arduino clone. Does it have removable stepper motors? Yes, which is sort of an advantage. And uh, LCD screen. That's about it. That, that's about all the questions you really have when you order one of these kits. Uh, oh, the nozzle is 0.4. Mechanical end stops. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, oh, oh, the injection molded parts. Uh, metal. Look at these motor mounts. I think are metal. Let me get one out. And, and no instructions. That's the other thing. Is like, hey, are you going to get instructions? I don't see any. There might be some online. You know, I searched for this brand, Haka, and didn't really come up with much except for a couple sites selling them, which probably wasn't good. But I've built a 3D printer before. I think I can handle it. But I have never built a Delta before, so I will make a build video. I won't film the whole thing. These are uh, aluminum, what do you call it, uh, when they put the coating on there, a anodized aluminum or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to film the entire thing. I'll film it when I run into problems. Other than that, uh, it's a I just assume it's a standard build, right? I mean, it's three axes and a motor and electronics and this 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 still worries me. I I, I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out. All right, see you in the next video. One more thing before I go. Uh, I know I've done some videos on, like, programming and PHP and Python, and then I've done, like, home security and 3D printers and, like, hacking on everyday stuff. You guys want to see, like, hacking on everyday stuff or, like, hacking on software and shopping carts and stuff like that? Let me know. Uh, I mean, I could do both, but... I think it's a rare audience that wants to see both. I don't know. Let me know which videos you like more.